uh, today I'm going to indeed uh, talk about the Cosmos SDK uh, core file, let's say, the, the file that really defines your application that wire everything uh, to make your chain working, which is called uh, app.go. So who I am, yeah, uh, as a study interests me, I indeed am a, a dev developer relation uh, for uh, for the Cosmos SDK. I started in uh, March 22 of this year at Interchain GmbH, which is a company with region that is developing uh, the Cosmos SDK. And I uh, just, in fact, I'm just French and I'm living in the Netherlands currently. I posted uh, GitHub and Discord, so if you have any question afterwards and you want to reach me directly, you can just uh, send me a message via Discord. So Billy explained to you last week what is the Cosmos SDK, so I won't, uh, I won't go too long on this, but to just uh, summarize, indeed, the uh, Cosmos SDK is just a software development kit that allows you to build uh, application-specific blockchains, which means that you have your blockchain that, that is really an application that you can really define uh, what are the capability, what are the features, and uh, the SDK abstracts things so you can launch your uh, blockchain faster. Uh, the Cosmos SDK uses as well uh, Tendermint, which is uh, the consensus uh, layer, and uh, which means the Cosmos SDK as well implement the ABCI uh, interface, uh, the ABCI, the application blockchain interface, to be able to talk uh, to Tendermint so that you don't have to. So that means you can just, with the SDK, get ready and only build directly your chain without having to worry about the consensus, without having to worry about other uh, details. Uh, so that's why we provide out of the box a few modules. Uh, for instance, the most known modules are the uh, Auth, Bank, Gov, Staking, Mint. Uh, basically, they provide basic functionalities uh, for your chain, uh, which is like the authentication, the Auth module will allow uh, for verifying signatures and uh, be able to uh, to send transactions. The bank module is just allow transfer uh, token transfer functionality. So basically, send when you want to send a token to another address, this will be able you'll be able to do that. As you know, most of the Cosmos SDK chains have as well uh, go governance. This is because the Cosmos SDK include directly a governance module, which allows you via governance proposal to uh, to just have governance with your community. You can. Uh, make text proposal to ask question, or and you can directly upgrade the chain of, uh, for uh, from all its validator via a proposal. The staking module implements just basically the yeah the proof of stake capabilities, so you can become a validator, uh, delegate to a validator, and uh, as you know, uh, there is always inflation uh, to the uh, to the uh, to the token of uh, of a chain, so the mint uh module will allow you to do that there is many other module i won't go over all of them you are able to quickly uh see that via this link uh the which will list all the modules of uh of uh the sdk maybe i could I'm not sure maybe it will be nice i'm going to paste the link i have in directly in the chat so you can easily go to it uh Marco, the product lead of uh, of the Cosmos SDK, had a good introduction for the SDK in general, uh, which we won't uh, talk about here. We we'll only stay uh, and uh, talk about the app.go file. So, if you wish to learn more in general about the SDK, quickly how ABCI talks, what ABCI helps you, uh, what base app is, etc., I invite you to watch a half an hour video from uh, from Marco. So, how is uh, what is the architecture of uh, of a usual Cosmos blockchain? That's all this slide from Billy's presentation. Basically, I think you recognize this. So, this is basically you have the app.go, which will be where you will be able to wire all your modules, uh, all your stores, all your uh, all your um, yeah, modules, and you'll be able to add your custom modules that you've uh, developed for your own chain. Uh, next to that, you obviously have clients because you want to be able to to interact with this uh, with your chain, whether it is via CLI to type a new chain uh, uh, DX transaction module name slash a comment you have, or via a GRC REST API. Uh, 
But enough of that talking now. Uh, as I've said, we will focus on uh, the app.go in general. So I will lift, I will leave out the how to build a module, uh, or to have uh, uh, create clients. You will actually learn that in the EB Academy. So uh, if not already, I'm not sure. <laughs> but you, you, you will definitely learn that uh, by following the academy. So there is no point of me to uh, to really focus on that. Um, so there will be a focus on the app.go. So basically, what does app.go? Uh, it creates uh, the app structure, uh, which is uh, the let's say the uh, the object, the, the struct in Go uh, that will uh, be able to uh, from which you will be able to start the chain, and you will be able to uh, to um, yeah that that will define basically your 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 chain. Uh, this implements, as I've said. Uh, the ABCI uh, from tournament, the ABCI interface, which is what we call within uh, the Cosmos SDK base app. So this is a layer uh, of abstraction so that you don't have to worry about ABCI at all. Uh, it defines all the modules, uh, the keepers you want to have. It sets all the stores, uh, and uh, it wires all the module together and some configuration that are not uh, defined via the genesis of your governance later. So I'm just going to quickly do a walkthrough. Here it is. Um, I'm just basically what I'm going to do today is walk you through this file, explain a bit why things are there, why you need it, what are pitfalls, and uh, with a quick uh, demo. So what I did is I know you guys are using uh, Ignite, which when you skip for something will generate you a big file like this, I feel like. Yeah. Is it better? Whoa, maybe it's a bit too big. Fine. Uh, you will, all right. You will, um, you will know this long file of uh, keepers being initialized, uh, initiated and uh, configuration. So, so this can be a bit scary at first. You must be like, what, what is all that? Uh, what does it do? So um, I actually will not start from uh, um, the Ignite default. I will actually skim it down, skim it down for, for the presentation to have what is uh, really uh, the base, to, uh, the, to have a base uh, working chain. This is Gaia, we don't want that. All right. So let's skip the imports because, yeah. Your editor will usually import uh, that automatically for you. Um, so let's start. You have a few, ver they find a few variables. Uh, I'll come back to a few later. Default on node is not super uh, relevant. Oh, it's just relevant, but this will basically uh, um, help to create the, the configuration uh, uh, folder, define the configuration folder uh, of, of, uh, of your app. So. Usually you have it there, but nothing inter very interesting here. Uh, module basic, uh, this is every module implements uh, the uh, app module basic interface, uh, which is uh, which, which is an interface that will uh, that will allow you to register uh, the the interface of your module. That will register uh, the the codecs of your module for serialization, the serialization, and as well the queries and the, the transactions. And uh, what what you are doing here is basically you will create uh, a basic manager of all the module you want for your chain. Uh, so that, uh, and basically what basic manager does, it will call all those, uh, it will call the, uh, the function of our module basic uh, one by module per module so that you don't have to initialize all your modules uh, uh, directly. Um, I'll come back to this later. Uh, let's start here. So this is the structure of your uh, application. As, as you see, uh, you have basically a uh, base app. So you, you want your, uh, your application to implement the base app uh, interface. So you will, uh, you will have as well uh, the, the codecs uh, for, your, for your application, which is uh, legacy amino, which is the old amino codecs that we use for uh, for uh, for serialization, the serialization, uh, and 
this is legacy because we've deprecated that and now we're using protobuf but for signing for instance we still need to use this uh this um this codec um now we will define here the two stores we'll use uh for uh for our for our modules and we have as well the keeper we want to use uh for um for module we're defined here so note that we let me know that we have exactly the same amount of keeper that we have the same amount of uh, module this is something important that you actually uh you will um you have to watch out that you actually have all the uh um that you verify that all modules every time you initiate every time you want to add a keeper that the uh you actually have the module in the basic manager i will explain that later and i will explain this a bit later so let's have let's in, let's create our uh mini app so we want to basically first uh define a few things for base app for instance uh we'll create uh we'll want to set the version which will be uh, uh which will be overrated when 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 you build your application who we'll as well want to uh to say the interface registry uh which you get uh which you have oh. By def which you have by default created by Ignite, and what it does is, where is it? What it does is it basically make a default locally config with default uh, good value for serialization, the serialization of uh, on all the module talks. Uh, and now let's get to actually the interesting part, which is um, wait, let me do it. Wait. Can you still see properly? Okay. Which is the initialization of the keepers. So you have to actually do that manually and you have to do it in the correct order. So every keepers, you want to initialize them with the proper, uh, with the proper, yeah, variable. So this is pretty easy. Uh, you know that you have, you give the app codec, you give, uh, you give a few types that you need to, but it's pretty easy. You just need to check which type is actually wanted. And now let's go to the Mac per uh, permission. Uh, this is because you want every module's uh, account must have the permission, for instance, to mint or to burn token or to stake token. And by default, they don't have those permission. So you have to think that the mint, uh, the mint module should have the permission to mint because it's the module that actually mint things. And you want your staking. Uh, uh, module to be able to burn uh to burn validators or to burn uh uh delegators in case of uh, of um, in case of baby if you offer of a validator so then you you just do that you initiate your keeper one by one and then um and then you have to really watch out of the order for instance you do not want to have uh, your editor won't, will not help you, but you you want to watch out that every um, per you use are instantiated before you actually set it. So here the order really matters. You really need to have the uh, the keeper before uh, instantiated before you instantiate the bank keeper. Otherwise, you get issues. Uh, you. So let's go now. Now that you have essential all your keeper, what does the module manager? Uh, you only have the keeper, but the module is just more than a keeper. So you need to create all the modules, and um, you will use those keepers for uh, using the the new app module um, um, function constructor. So basically, you will. Um, Okay, I keep. I will just stop notification. Keep getting distracted. Okay. All right. Um, you want as well to have again your six module you've been defi you define above to be uh, here. So you really have to um, to verify that every module are instantiated. And then uh, you want to put it in the correct order, and you're going to ask me 
what is the order actually of a module? How do I know um, in which order I want to I want to put it? Well, you have to think of what um, <clears throat> what the module re re requires. For instance, here you do not want to have the uh, the um, The as I explained here, you do not want to have the uh, the sashing before. Where is sashing? Actually, don't have sashing in this application. Let me have it here. Where is it? Okay. Here is it. Here you do want to have um, you want to have the session after because you want the token to be uh, you want to slash the correct amount of token for uh, for um, for um, an account. And then there is a few other things that you, you, you'll need, for instance, for testing. You want to register exactly the same way you have registered your module here for the simulation. So for your test, where am I? For, for, for your test, you will be able to, um, to replicate uh, the chain uh, directly in your test. And then you want to finish up the uh, the base app uh, and um, you want to finish up the uh, the um, the uh, base app instantiation by by uh, defining a few function to do what what happened when you need to chain for a being blocker and then blocker and uh, an anti handler. And an anti-handler is basically something that will enrich. Uh, th this is something that is called every time you um, you have uh, a check TS or deliver TX to verify, to help verify uh, a, a transaction. So basically what it does here, it, do it calls a module manager and it will call uh, the begging blocker of every module. So uh, you've set for, uh, for base app at, uh, at every Benic block. It will uh, it will call this function, and the module manager will basically uh, loop through all the module in the order you have defined and call their own begging uh, begging block. Uh, and you have the same for the end block. It will loop through uh, to the order you have defined, and it will uh, and it will call the uh, the end block of your own module. So now, this a few. Um, a few functions here are only necessary for testing. Uh, for instance, this you don't really you don't really need it uh, uh, for for simple for simply having uh, a chain work. But you you will want to have that if you want to verify that, uh, for instance, you actually setting properly the permission and you know that when you have your chain working, you will not encounter a problem. Let's say the uh, the you, you forgot. Uh, you you want to verify in your test, for instance, that all the permissions are properly set, and you don't realize that, for instance, you can't your your mint account is not able to uh, to uh, to mint any uh, any new token. But what I'm going to do now is quickly show you a few drawback, and then I will. So basically, you know, um, you have. We have now a new chain that is being built, and we're going to uh, go quickly um, test a few things and see what happens if you actually do something wrong with the order or with uh, or, or you forget something. Here, this is just a small script that uh, that basically uh, instantiates that basically instantiate uh, configure the chain, so I don't have.
to do it manually. I think the tutorial explains you to that JavaScript to make it uh, directly uh, done. Um, so that's your question. Can we modify, manually modify the Go created by Ignite? Uh, I do believe so, yes. Uh, you can uh, you can do that. I believe in Ignite they have a few, um, those line here, a line you should not remove because this is what they use for uh, when you scaffold a new module to add it directly and you have that Go. Uh, eventually, uh, when you have a chain, it will just eventually grow out of Ignite. So there is a moment where you will not um want to use ignite or cannot use ignite and then and then you have to uh to add all of this manually in your uh in your app that go but i'm just going to start my chain that has only five modules i believe six modules uh so it doesn't do much but this is just for demonstration purposes uh Okay, my chain is started. Let me just, I created two accounts. Let me just um, here. All right. Um, now let's say basic thing, I will want to just from um, and the transaction from uh, Alice uh, to Bob. So this will just, of 10 mini oopsie i will sign my transaction and it goes well i will um i'm able to query the transaction and see that everything uh my transaction can be broadcasted and i'm going to see if there is any issue with it uh so we see here that Code zero. So there is uh there there were any error and my um my transaction has been uh, uh fully included. And we can quickly check that by Bob to query having 110 mini instead of a genesis he had only uh sorry a thousand ten he had only a thousand uh but now the interesting part is what happened if I actually reverse i actually uh, uh do something wrong here how can i know um how i can see what is wrong so for instance i have just what i explained oh, let me actually do that I just swipe out. Um, we actually do something on this. So. I actually just swipe out those two modules, and I have basically a nil uh, app account keeper. Um, the editor doesn't give any error, as you can see. It will. This is valid Go code. You just have a nil account keeper. And so it will just, your chain will just build. It will have, uh, you'll have any issue with that. Uh, it will build and it will as well start because. Uh, because yeah, there, there is nothing wrong you just have um, an issue that uh, when bank will want to do something, it won't have access to, a, to the account keeper. So you can see already a, an error customer fa failure. Module account min doesn't exist, uh, which means that the bank want to uh, have want to want uh, uh, to have access to the uh, mint keeper, but. It doesn't have access to any account. It doesn't have access to any account, so it cannot see the mint keeper, uh, the mint account, mint module. Sorry, but further than that, other than that, it will still. Uh, you you will know that 
that you have actually swiped out because here you'll see in the stack trace. Um, all right. Where is it? This is okay. Well, you uh, actually can't find, but you you will see in the star trace that um, it doesn't, it couldn't, it cannot find uh, um, the address of the module, and then you can realize that oh, this is, this comes from the bank keeper, and my bank keeper oh here it is, and my bank keeper um, doesn't have access to the account, so you have to look at your keepers uh, calls and verify that everything is done properly. Um, let's have another common error, which is, for instance, you uh, you forgot to have to instantiate your uh, module basic here. So basically, the uh, the um, deserialization of of uh, the um, all those. All those functions, all those calls will not be uh, registered for your for your for your uh, for your modules. And in that case, what we have removed is the OS module. So basically, we won't be able to um, <coughs> to sign any any transaction. So again, there is no issue. The chain builds properly, and the chain as well will. Start properly. Oh. Actually, it will not start. It will have sorry. It will have start properly. But now I have uh, I have done a uh, gen tx, which will make it not start properly because we didn't have define the address of uh, Cosmos OS VN VN beta base account is not registered. So basically, the basic manager will have called register interface. Which was registered as endpoint, but because uh, because we forgot it for uh, from uh, we didn't register the ABOLU basic, uh, we don't have the pass register. So if you encounter this error, this means that you forgot to add your uh, your module here. But now let me go back to this. This is, was a quick walk. I didn't explain very much, but I want to just say that it is very declarative and. Uh, there is no magic involved, but this is a bit error prone uh, because if you don't know or how modules interact with each other, even if they are core modules, you can easily make a mistake, forget uh, uh, have a nil pointer somewhere, or uh, or forget to instantiate your um, your module in general uh, because, as you see, you have to repeatedly do it. Uh, but the SDK team came up with something uh, new, which is uh, which is called iPowering, and this is what I'm going to show you now, and that will eventually help you to don't have to deal with all that app.go uh, thing. So this, I don't think it's available for you uh, for the academy because you're using 046. But the next release coming very soon, uh, we will have, and you get to see that now, something called Dep Inject. And this is a dependency injection framework. This will, for you, automatically do in the correct order, instantiate all the modules, uh, all the keeper and all the modules uh, uh, um, you, you want in your app. So this is applicacy. So this is basically the same app that go with Sim. Pretty long because we have more modules. This is Sim app. Uh, you can see the same thing as before, the order. The the, uh, the in the simulation manager again, and all that logic, and as well all the keepers. And when you have more uh, more modules, you have as well more keepers to initiate. And then that means you can you have you increase it increases the chance that you make a mistake, uh, just swiping uh, a keeper with another doesn't immediately tells you uh, what's wrong.
and now this is the new the new way we can do that and as you see firstly the file is way way shorter but what 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 you what you have is still the module basic which will still define basically all the modules uh, you want in your chain uh, auth bank mint as we have you just seen and thanks to something called dep inject in a configuration shell i will show you you will be able to have all instantiate all your keeper the interface registry all the codec we've seen about uh the codec and the the uh the type we've seen uh before and all your keeper will be able to just instantiate it automatically let's say uh thanks to dep inject and you will be able to um to just um, build your application thanks to uh, to the uh, build to build your application, and then all your keeper and module will be co properly instantiated. And as you see, what's left to do is only um, some configuration. The upgrade mode we don't talk about. We didn't talk about the can do via can be done via configuration and just the order. Although you can still set the order in the configuration, but sometimes you just want to set the order here. And that's it. Then obviously you want there is still basic stuff to be done, like mounting the stores. And uh this is for the simulation. You want to have the same order, but that's it. And so what makes you go from this to this? This is basically a configuration file uh where you will be able to uh to define your modules and the configuration of those modules to be uh, to be injected. So instead of <laughs> instead of um of having to uh to to uh, instantiate manually you will be basically say i want this module with this configuration i will show after and um and um and it will be basically uh, use the proper configuration from the module itself to uh to be able to uh to create it so let's have a module which has actually configuration um the group module for instance you want to define a uh, metadata there is a tutorial about that which has a maximum length of uh a 20 uh 255 uh bytes so uh you want you you will be able to set your configuration directly in this uh configuration file and then it will be automatically uh create your keeper with the right configuration. Well, before, you would have had to um, to create a configuration directly here. And if you did before or after, it could have posed problem. So how does things, how does this work? Uh, example, indeed, the NFC module, which is in uh, um, 046, uh, which is a new module. Uh, what you have to do if you want to uh, if you want to um, <clears throat> create, um, let me actually start with that. What what you want to do to define your module, you you know the profile you have to define for the message uh, of your module. Well, now you can just quickly have an option that will uh, that will allow you to just um, create the basic configuration of your module. So here, the NFT module have no configuration, but for instance, for uh, for the group module, you want a max duration period of uh, uh, which is a duration, and you want um, the max metal length, which is uh, which is a number, which uh, you and sixty four in that case. And what's and then we will be able to generate the profile corresponding to this configuration, and the profile of this configuration will uh, this is generated uh, file. And you will be able basically to to set the configuration of that module, and what it will do then is when you will um, you have to define for dep inject in your own module what happened when when I'm being created. So here, it, you you basically this is to the module developer. So we've done that for every module in the SDK. So this is why dep inject can do the magic for a chain developer. But if you want to have your module compatible with step inject what you need to do is basically say hey this is what my module needs and um this is what my module returns so a module returns as you know uh the um 
the app module and the app module basic, and they return as well the keeper. Uh, and what it takes in is all of this. So Depp and Check will do a thing and provide uh, everything that is needed. From here, we'll basically inject all those all those fields, and you will be able to instantiate here your uh, your keeper, create your uh, your module uh, your module, and return that. And basically, here what happened is uh, Depp Inject will know thanks to the inputs and the output how to inject properly uh, all those modules and all those keepers. And here, this is basically what we will do for building. Uh, the application. So that was a bit of sneak peek of what's going to happen. Uh, this is obviously, sorry, still possible to do it the old way. Uh, some chain will want to keep doing keep doing the old way because it's more declarative. But if you're learning uh, and if you just don't want to have to care about, yeah, all of this and remove this error prone. Uh, uh, I see your hand. I will just finish this. And then I will open a question because I'm actually done. Uh, if you don't want to have to um, to uh, to have to initiate it yourself and have to define the conf the configuration yourself, there you can just have your app config and uh, it will do that for you. So that was it. That was my presentation. As you've seen, uh, we went quickly through uh, the basic thing. This is definitely not a presentation that went deep into some concepts. You will learn that in the academy. So if you have any question, uh, yeah, please uh, tell me. So I see uh, someone has raised his hand. Could, do you, would you want to see a question? Sure, may I go ahead? Yeah, sure. So I have a couple of uh, questions. First of all, thank you, Julian, for the amazing session. And thank you for giving the sneak peek into the next version of Cosmos uh, SDK. So my first question is that other than making app.go better and uh, you know more organized, what benefits does the introduction of dependency injection bring for most people? Because my assumption is that most people will be using Ignite CLI for generating it. And as of right now, in the current implementation of app.go, Ignite CLI handles it very well, um, if I'm not like with what my experience has been, it's pretty smooth. So yeah, what other benefits does it bring? Well, basically, what Unite CLI doesn't do, as far as and uh, as far as I know, is when you have uh, your own module and you have, for instance, configuration for this module, uh, you have you want to uh, you will be able, for instance, to have a module with all. Uh, was all the conversation, uh, the configuration. So you have basically your profile, which will define the configuration of all of your module directly, and someone that will uh, want to use your module will easily be able to to define the configuration he wants for this module without having to care about uh, any order uh, or, or anything like that. So I don't believe that uh, Ignite CLI solved the order problem. Let's say uh, let's say that. Um, you create a module that needs uh, uh, um, a module that is not instantiated yet. It will just add it where the scaffolding line is, and you you won't have fixed this order problem. So this does that for you. Okay, uh, got it. So I guess in a way, then just like we have packages for Go, we could perhaps someday have a store for modules or that we have for Cosmos is good. I do have a second question. I'm so sorry to interrupt. Yeah, please go on. Oh, I was, about, I, I was about to say there is in there there were indeed an idea eventually to have something called Atlas, which will be a, a package manager for uh, for modules. Uh, but this is not in the work yet. But okay, me. yeah, it sounds like a nice thing to have for the future. I do have a second question that may not be very relevant to what we study today, but I saw in the references to something called the interface registry. And while I do understand what keepers and all those things do, I would like to know more about interface registry. Basically, the interface registry is uh, define the uh, the path uh, of a fun of uh, of a message you want to access you want to access for uh, for a keeper. For instance, you have. Uh, let me actually show you easily. Where is it? 
me use this. So basically, uh, this is, as you see, an interface, and you will be able to uh, to register uh, messages uh, for, for from your module. So um, um, the bank has, for instance, the message send uh, message, and uh, you want to to say when you access uh, this uh, path, you will you will. Uh, this is the implementation of this path. So when you will be able, for instance, for governance proposal when you precise uh, the the cosmos dot uh, the path of uh, the the uh, message you want to call it will allow us to know you will allow your chain to know what do i need to uh, to uh, which function do i need to to call for that so in the case of message send you will be able from the uh, cosmos dot bank slash v1 beta 1 dot message sends you will know that it, it has to use the message and function from the back module with the okay. correct uh, with the correct um, attributes. You got it. Thanks, Julian. Uh, these are all the questions I have today. Okay. Has anyone else another question? No, if not, then uh, thank you very much for uh, for attending and uh, advise you. Uh, there is, I don't know if you know, there is the Cosmoverse live stream uh, and with kind of cool, interesting thing happening in the, in the Cosmos space. Uh, I will invite you to, to watch it. This is interesting conference. <laughs>